Okay, cool. So, I saw the statistic that 91% of brands are starting to look at moving in-house at the very minimum. And I think it's quite a large start, but it's certainly not one that I'm really surprised about. So some of the core reasons that people came up with for why they wanted to start looking towards that in-house move was transparency, control over creative, and then better levels of ROI. Now, they're all things that generally everybody wants anyway, but specifically for this, then I can explain from my journey of how we made that step towards in-house and what our key sort of motivators and drivers and the things that we've learned along the way. So to give you a quick sort of overview, I joined Hakim Group four years ago. And when I first started, then I came in as a digital uh, project manager and I was the only digital person in the entire business managing a series of external agencies. All of these agencies were reputable, did a good job to a certain extent. But I kept finding all these challenges, so simple things. The way that Hacking Group works is it's an acquisition group of different opticians. So we would buy an independent opticians, we would have a joint venture partner inside of that practice, it retains its independence, its brand, all of those different things. But then at the same time, we would take all of the central level support, so we'd do all the marketing, the accounts, finance, etc. Now, it was an interesting model, and it works phenomenally well. And over the four years that I was there, then we grew from 30 locations to 150, and we never lost a joint venture partner in the process. So within that, though, it created its own challenges. We were effectively 150 small businesses with their own individual websites and then some kind of national presence that we had to put together as well. And that was very hard for an agency to really understand how to work with us best. They created a very basic WordPress template and rolled it out across the business. And then when we wanted to make subtle changes to things like just opening hours, it would go from the practice to us, to the agency, to India to be done, and then back and back and back and back. And it would take weeks to do the most simple things with a lot of limitation. So very quickly, I got fed up with people using me as the soundboard to say, what's going on? Why is this not being done? Can we not do something a little bit better? And I started to look at ways that we could build things in-house. So we hired a developer first. That was a lot of tough work. Um, working with developers can be challenging at times. Transparency, again, can be equally as hard as working with an agency. So I started to look at ways that we could do things ourselves. And there's actually quite a lot of options out there now because things like you've got Webflow, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, those type of things that have always been seen as small business tools now actually can take a lot more of the corporate stuff than you'd ever imagine. Some of the features that those guys have got is absolutely phenomenal. So we went through all the rings and we chose to use Wix as the provider. And everybody told us we were absolutely nuts and we were gonna fall on our face and it was gonna be terrible. But we built the first couple of websites, we transitioned them across, we saw SEO ranking increases, we saw traffic increases, time on page went up, everything looked very, very positive. So I then put a presentation together, and this was the first person that I ever hired into my team. This is uh, Nathaniel, a social media assistant, or social media apprentice when he joined. And then this is my office exec, you probably can't see him, but that's my fish, Bruce. So he kept me there. And this was 2 a.m. the night before we then went to pitch at our internal conference to say, we're now going to start taking things in-house. When we said we're going to take things in-house, we got an overwhelming sound of, thank God somebody's taking control, and now there's accountability coming from the central team, because a lot of the time, if you're working internally within the business and people are asking you for things and the agencies aren't delivering, then you're throwing it over, it's the agency's fault, it's the agency's fault. If you take things in-house, the accountability is yours, but also there's that appreciation for when you get the job done. So over the next six weeks, I hired another, can you see the next picture? Has that come through? Oh, have they not loaded? Okay, so the pictures haven't turned up, but over the next six weeks, then I took another couple of people on. Between four of us, with no coding knowledge, we built 60 websites, and then we launched 60 websites at the exact same time and saw ranking increases across the board. It was the first time that our independence within the group started to outrank Specsavers, Vision Express. We had an amazing case study, traffic went up, leads from Google and all the other areas we picked up and just got rid of all the small things that the agency had skipped on because they knew we wouldn't notice at the time. Once we'd done that transition, then we started to look at how we can scale the process and how we can grow. And over the course of the four years that I was with Hakeem Group, 
then we managed to have a whole central office of 30 plus marketeers who were doing some really amazing industry leading stuff and I'm going to share some of that with you and then talk to you about how we navigated some of the challenges within it. So hopefully these pictures work. Yep. So the migration piece was interesting for us because we didn't want to use the same templated system that had been done before. What we did was we created a long like, range of a dozen different templates and each template was focused around a particular business goal or value. So instead of just getting people to choose from the designs that were available, we said, what is your business trying to achieve? Are you more client focused? Are you more high end brand focused? What are the type of things? How often do you post to your blog, to your social media, to these different areas? And we built modular pieces so that we could drop and customize websites that actually really brought out the strength of each location that we were working with. So although there's 150 of these sites that did come from a templated structure, not a single one of them looks the same as the next, so you can't tell that there's any difference. The practices felt a real level of personalization, and the whole team felt a really rewarding piece of satisfaction because confidence in the marketing team went from 20% to 95%. So that's where you can start to see a real change in the difference of the mindset. So once we'd done that piece, then we started to look at what are the extra things that you can do because when you give an agency a brief, then they will stick to that brief. They will do exactly what you've asked them to do. They may come back with extra recommendations if they think that they can charge you for it. But looking at ways in terms of your business, what can you do as an addition? We started to create national content like infographics. We started to do lead generation campaigns and building landing pages, hundreds of landing pages that were completely customized word for word to our ads, took all of our ads in-house and ran them all ourselves. And in the first month, so this was an audiology campaign that we ran, we were using three external lead generators for the audiology side of our business and they were delivering at four times our ROI. In a weekend, me and my team put this landing page together, a few variations, the whole ad campaign launched it and we were delivering 12 times ROI the week later. 20 grand spent, 200 grand, 240,000 return. So those type of things, they're not restricted in terms of what you can do in-house because of the way that things have changed with Google, with Facebook. They're optimizing campaigns a lot for you anyway, so it's a lot more about the strategic advantage of knowing what you want to do and who you want to target, dark target and intrinsically understanding your customers and their touch points that's actually gonna make you win. Agencies will not go to that level of detail to understand you unless you're spending horrendous budgets, which is when they start putting large management fees on top. We did a load of social campaigns and content and we prepared banks of stuff. And then we started to look at other areas of business challenges because I think as marketeers, we can quite quickly get sort of siloed into the idea that we're just lead generators but business challenges can come from any area. So one of the biggest ones for us was recruitment. We knew that we had tons of outstanding recruitment problems to get more and more opticians into the practices because it's a national problem for, for any of the businesses, all of our competitors as well. But the recruitment team had no digital support at that time. They were trying to just use Indeed. They were sending people to our website where they had one form which was just let us know your interest when we're a thousand people business. So it just doesn't work anymore. So we created a load of recruitment ads. We built a recruitment website. We started channeling and actually focusing the marketing team on fixing this issue. And that had a huge amount of value. It managed to place so many of those positions where the average recruitment fee would have been five grand a pop. So ultimately it comes down to the question of why would you bother to do it? That's the first thing that usually comes to people's minds. And the first thing really is hours versus value. It's talking about with an agency, they will focus on billing you for the most amount of hours in terms of getting the most out of their client, which you would do if you were that agency, as long as you were delivering value as well. When you're an internal business, then your team doesn't think that way. Your team is only thinking about what is the best use of my time to make the most applicable value internally for this company, regardless of what the billable rate or how easy or hard that would be to get through. And then a lot of the time, they'll only meet the requirements. So when we 
took on this thing, then the second thing that started to happen was we got so many support queries. The amount of phone calls and emails and everything things that we were always getting, we'd never really managed to optimize. So we built a form system. This is one example of a profile of form that we took to actually build the websites. We ended up building about 60 different forms from marketing campaigns to social uh, campaigns or whether they wanted to rebrand, logo changes, anything. So we didn't get a single email or phone call coming through to us anymore. Everything was automated through a system and we could put all of that place in place from what we had. Um, the other thing is control, accountability, cost, and just to generally understand some of the things that you were doing. So we've done a lot of Facebook campaigns where we outsourced it originally, but then we started to look at why are we spending so much money targeting such a wide demographic when really the hyper, you know, the hyper target is where we want to go. So just to show you an example with this campaign here, instead of spending a ridiculous amount of money, we took a couple of hundred quid we found a few of the biggest buildings in London that are full of bankers that we know are on a corporate scheme that get a 300 pound eye care voucher. And then we radius targeted that particular building just to those bankers to say, hold on a minute, would you like to buy some glasses from us for 300 pounds? We're running a discount promotion on that. So you only pay really for your ads on the radius that was targeted. So this one here, the blue, you can reduce it down to a one kilometer radius but actually the red exclusion zones of a one kilometer can overlay onto the blue, which then the exclusion takes priority. So we isolated individual buildings within a five meter radius and started running very, very targeted measures across the business. And we've seen so much success from doing things like that because it's such a small spend, but massive return. An agency wouldn't do that because with that type of piece, if you're spending 500 pounds on a campaign, then where's their management fee? Where's the value for them to do that type? They're going to want to spend the larger budgets because it allows them to bill higher in a lot of cases. And often what you see is a lot of negativity. It always sounds like it's negative to agencies as this is why you need to move away from them. But actually I think that the opportunities there, the real reason that we decided to take things in house, because we were a fast growing business, we didn't really need the hassle of it, but we saw the potential opportunities. And the opportunities to do more and to do things that just wouldn't fall into the usual scope allowed us to be innovators and start to lead the industry in the way we wanted to go. This is an example of one of the things that we did. So in our audiology business, then we were having a discussion and we started talking about an Alexa device. And then we started to discuss actually, you know, we're an audiology company. Is there a hearing test on the Alexa device? Can somebody just do a bit of a quick hearing check at home? Because the average person takes 10 years before they actually admit to themselves that they've got a hearing problem. And usually it's one of their family members or their spouse that said, you need to go and get your hearing tested, otherwise you're in for it. And then they turn up to come and get that appointment with us. So what we did was we created a hearing screener, which was a non-clinical version, but well-built test that allowed you to see whether you do have the potential of a hearing problem or not. People would go through that hearing test and then at the end it says, you have a 50% likelihood or a 70% likelihood that you may have a hearing loss. Would you like to book a call with an audiologist? Alexa captures the data and sends it through to us. That whole project took us two weeks to build, cost us less than a thousand pounds. And then we were in this publishing, Audiology World News, home hearing tests available to 100 million users and another 12 publishers across the country. So it really does work to do these quick, agile projects internally. Another project that we did, we, uh, one of the businesses that we acquired had a half a million turnover contact lens side of the business that was attached to the brand and it was causing problems. So within a week, we'd created a rebrand, we'd launched it, we changed it over, optimized the site, ready to go. We took that business from not profitable for 10 years on that contact lens side to profitable in less than six months. And now we've continued to grow that by using as much innovative ideas and creative technology that we can to really help sort of supersede that growth. Another thing that we did was we created a national site. So we had all of our individual locations and what I was getting them to do, because we'd kind of got to the top of the SERPs for opticians in an area, we thought, well, where's the next stage of growth? 
The next stage of growth is going after the queries that people would search before that. So I've got an issue with my eye, something that, you know, my vision is beginning to feel a bit cloudy. Those type of symptom-based questions, we got the actual opticians from all of our practices to write the answers to those questions, uploading them as blogs onto those practice websites. Very quickly, we realized that was a mistake because an optician in Manchester has just written a really nice blog on glaucoma and he's now getting 2,000 people a month visiting that, but they only have a three mile catchment radius for people who will actually go to their practice. So we created a national website, bookanitest.co.uk, merged hundreds of blogs over to that site, and now that's driving tens of thousands of people monthly, just completely organically from the content that we created in house. And from that, we've started to see really good leads just trickle down throughout our national network. And projects like that would just be very, very hard for an agency to give you that kind of scope and depth. It's only really something that you would understand the opportunity for as an internal team. So who do you need when you're building out an internal team as well? Because the requirements are very, very different. The standard structure, especially in the larger corporates, is you'd have a marketing assistant, a marketing exec, a marketing manager, up and up and up. But a lot of these titles are very generalist titles because they're used to working with agencies or experts in certain capacities. What you actually need if you're going to build a strong in-house team is the capability, the resource to do it. So it's graphic designers, content writers, analytics and SEO, and paid ad specialists. You don't need a large array of marketing managers, marketing execs, marketing assistants. Those people are good at putting the manager piece together, but without the actual creative ability in your teams, then you couldn't possibly deliver all the things that you want to do. So if you can find a really good graphic designer who actually can understand the purpose of the project you're working on, then they're far more valuable than having a marketing manager who can't do those skills themselves, and it gets a really good team collaboration. So what are some of the biggest challenges that uh, I faced in particular when we began to do this in-house transition. And stop speaking tech is one of the biggest ones that you're gonna get because when an agency tells you, this is what we need to do, here's a proposal, they've done it from a sales point of view. They've done it from a position of, this is how we know people will understand it. When you start building things yourself, then it actually is, um, you do it without thinking. You start talking more about the detail of the tech and the things that you're building, rather than talking about the business value, which is what the agency would have presented in the first case. So when you're speaking to the, you know, the senior teams, when you're going through the approval processes, don't start focusing on the tech just because you're building it. Remain with the focus of what is the value to the business of us doing this in the first place. They don't necessarily need to know the details. I think um, Apple had the, one of the best ones when they released the iPod because they said, we'll put a thousand songs in your pocket and that was their marketing campaign. They never once talked about the technology or the innovation or anything behind it. It was just purely about the value they were going to add at that point in time. Oops, I think I missed a point there. And the other one is internal stakeholders. Be super careful of all the other departments, all of your suppliers, anybody that you're working with, going, oh, I've noticed you've now got a bunch of graphic designers, you've now got a bunch of content writers. Well, I'm gonna send you 300 internal documents and I want you to make these all look really beautiful or I've got these events that I want you to help with. A lot of the time you'll end up getting so bogged down with internal stuff because other people now know that you're a utilizable resource where they don't have a, a cost attached to it per se that you don't get that much work done so just be really careful to make sure that other people from other departments aren't pushing your your resources too hard biggest opportunities so create the value pieces where the business needs that was again where recruitment but we also found it in comms so when i was talking about the the forms and the support system that we did we actually rolled out for our digital team with a help service. So we had about 50 internal articles that answered all the questions that people would commonly ask. After we stopped having to pick up any phone calls or pick up any emails or have any support queries, then all the other parts of the business decided they wanted to start doing the same thing. So our entire intranet system actually started out as a support system for the digital team that we then rolled out. So those type of things, the solutions that you'll build for your team will be able to be you'll be able to apply throughout the rest of the company. 
and then take the lead on the culture as well. The culture and the comms and the internal piece, that's something that maybe you wouldn't have taken on before. Maybe there's an external PR agency there, but that's something you can absolutely take control of. So we had uh, Times Top 100 companies to work for. We came number one. Um, we really do focus on the culture piece. And I think from your perspective, then you could use a digital team to massively expedite that process. And then industry shifts. So just a couple of things that we're now particularly looking at. Things are moving towards closed networks. So before, the game was making sure that you were up there on Google. Now it's starting to look a little bit different with the landscape because everybody's got their own app. Everybody's got their own referral site like we have for the book and eye test. All of those type of things are happening and they're closed circuit from the usual user journey. So now you need to start looking about where are your customers going to be in, in those industry verticals and how can you create strong partnerships with people that already have that web traffic or that are curating that. So for example, we found a, uh, a website, now I've started with the, the veterinary group, one of the companies that they have is um, Pets for Homes, which does 5 million unique users a month, and all basically anybody who wants to buy a puppy through that site goes directly through them. We can't access those 5 million people without building a relationship with that site. But when you start looking at things like Uber, you, you used to search for a taxi. You go, if you want booking.com, you used to search for hotels on Google. You, going through all of these different in-app experiences. And if you don't build those relationships early, then they're going to monetize you. They're going to start charging you and then your competitors. And it's just going to become a race to the bottom. If you build a strong corporate partnership in the earlier stages, then you can benefit from that again and again. And then the other thing is craving the personalization and reactivity because automation is making things so much simpler. Um, touched on it before, but things like Google Ads, now you're actually getting benefits for following the automated ad processes. It makes a lot more sense when you're doing things like drag and drop folders and you're not having to do extreme amounts of code. It becomes a lot more about the creativity and the focus and what you want to achieve than it does about the technical stack behind it. So you don't need massively over you don't need to massively overcomplicate the process. All you need to start thinking about is what are the key touch points and how can I add the most amount of value in each one of those and then create that user journey behind it. And as a, as a final takeaway, if you do decide to take things in-house and then you lose the support of the agency, the agency might be coming back to you and giving you industry reports. They might be telling you all sorts of different things or keeping you in the loop on new technologies that they've been approached with. If you take that in-house, you have to do those things yourself. You have to do a lot of networking. You have to build a lot of partnerships. And you have to start new ways to leverage that technology yourself. One of the things that I did was um, I built a peers group of people from similar business models, but actually in different industries, which actually happened to be the veterinary space. So I had somebody from um, dental, veterinary, optical, and audiology all in buying groups, and we'd all meet together, and we'd all sit down and discuss what the challenges we had and how we were solving them, because a lot of our problems were the same, so we might as well collaborate on them because we weren't in competition. I ended up getting a job offer from the veterinary group because they've grown to 500 locations over the last four years from nothing, and I built no digital infrastructure, which is why I've now restarted my journey and built a new team, and I'm doing the same process again for them at this current point. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, happy to take any questions, but otherwise, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jordan. Um, Jordan's not going to be staying around much longer, so um, we're about to move into the change program. So we'll, we'll take a couple of questions together, um, but then I guess you can hang around for another five, ten minutes here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if anybody has some quiet questions that we didn't want to share with this group. Anyway, um, any burning questions? Yeah, so we used uh, Wix. We used Wix actually throughout the whole process. So 
Because of the work that we did with HG, then we became the largest global user of Wix. Um, and we built a really good relationship with them. In terms of the landing pages, then Wix has a dynamic function. So we created one standard template, and then off a back-end spreadsheet, then we could put in hundreds of variations of titles and images and different things, which we then attached to all of our campaigns. So we managed to build hundreds of landing, but effectively we built four or five templates and then populated it through the dynamic stuff. That makes sense. Uh, Wix, yeah, Wix is a website company. It's got 170 million websites around the world, biggest one around. Um, certainly worth having a look into. And as I say, w we use them intrinsically as part of our business, and it has been invaluable. The of speed that we can do things. So somebody r rung us up. What happened uh, last week? Somebody rung us up and said our websites had to be taken down for regulation purposes, one of the vet websites. We said, no problem. I sent a videographer down to the location the next day. I had the copywriter, the graphic designer designing the site, putting the copy in, and then by Friday, so started on a Tuesday, by Friday we had a brand new website live with professional media, handwritten copy, everything was perfect. And they were, you know, you just can't do that kind of quick pivot in most businesses, especially when you're a larger one. Yeah, correct. So it has a series of different tools. It's all, we use um, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager across the site. We also actually started using Bitly because we found that trying to track hundreds of websites and collate the user data into one place became quite a challenge um, across so many different websites because you can have 100 in your Google Analytics account, but then when you try and pull it into your Google Spreadsheets, there's only 10 tabs, so it becomes an absolute nightmare. But Bitly has a direct integration where we can actually do our internal linking, which doesn't affect our SEO, and we can track every single click from every single website. So we're very, very data-driven in everything that we do.